Hello everybody, it is Jayfrey back again, and as you can see, I am standing in this giant structure called the Sanctum, surrounded by a lot of scary mobs. Today, we are going over the Incendium mod, which adds a whole bunch of cool structures like this one, new biomes, and a whole bunch of new treasures to the nether dimension. Before we get started, please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel. This really helps me out more than you know, and you also get to join our amazing community. Now let's get right into the video. The first biome that the Incendium mod adds to the nether is the Ash Barrens. Now, as the name implies, this biome is a little bit barren, being almost completely made out of different types of basalt, but you can find small patches of crimson trees along with other plants here that make this otherwise barren biome a little bit more lively. The next biome up is the Inverted Forest. Now, the first thought that you might have when you're walking through this biome is, where are all the trees? But if you happen to look up, you'll see them all! This biome is very interesting to stumble upon in the nether, and it's super unique as it's the only biome that has trees that grow from the ceiling. So, if you're playing with your friends, you can make an awesome upside down tree house. The next biome is super cool and is called the Quartz Flats. This area is a lot of flatland made up of smooth quartz, so if you need a lot of it, it's perfect for you. There's also areas of soul fire and warped nilium, and also giant mountains made of it too, making it a unique biome to explore. You can also find a lot of structures like the Sanctum and the Quartz Kitchen here, but be careful because they're surrounded by lots of scary mobs like skeletons and also ghasts. The next biome is another super cool one, and it's called the Toxic Heap. This biome is mostly made out of green, lime, and yellow terracotta, but you can also find small areas of slime around here. Be careful when you enter though, as you'll be poisoned because it's toxic here. While traversing this biome, you may come across a variety of mobs, one of them being this very cute baby slime, but be careful, because these guys are actually quite strong and can pack a punch, and are poisonous, so if they come near you, then you'll be poisoned. The next biome up is the Volcanic Deltas. This biome is very similar to the Minecraft Basalt Deltas, except there's a lot more lava and a lot more magma blocks throughout. This makes it a very cool variation to come upon if you're traveling through the nether and want to find something other than a regular basalt delta. Next up is another biome that's very similar to one that's already in Minecraft, and that is the Weeping Valley. The Weeping Valley is kinda similar to the Minecraft Soul Sand Valley, except it's also comprised of Netherrack and Warped Nilium. You can also find some Nether Wart blocks here, but the usual bone blocks that you could find in the Soul Sand Valley. You'll also find Weeping Vines growing from the ceiling here, making it a new unique biome to come to. The last, but definitely not least, biome that the Incendium mod adds is the Withered Forest. This is one of my favorite biomes in this mod, and the floor is almost completely made out of blackstone, with little veins of tuff and basalt running through it, and you'll also find some magma veins running through it too. There are also tons and tons of trees here that are completely made out of basalt, and you'll find some crying obsidian on them sometimes. It's a super cool biome, and it's super fun to explore, 
but be careful because wither skeletons spawn here a lot, so make sure that you're prepared to fight them when you visit. Now that we've gone over all the biomes that the Incendium mod adds, we can look at some of the amazing structures that it adds too, like the first one, which is right behind me, called the Abandoned Tower. The Abandoned Tower is a pretty structure made out of warped wood, quartz, bone, and also blackstone. It has four different floors that you can fight through to make your way up to the top. Inside, you'll find lots of different skeletons guarding this place with their life, but if you're able to defeat them and make it up to the top, there will be tons of good loot waiting for you. Once you make it all the way up to the top, you can climb the ladder onto the roof and that's where you'll find the biggest prize, the Ghastling! Once you find the Ghastling, you're able to break the glass around its containment chamber and right click above its head with the fire charge and you can tame it and it will follow you around. The Gasling pet is a super useful pet to have around because it will block any oncoming fireballs coming from ghasts, so you're safe when you're traversing lands with lots of them like the quartz flats. The next structure may look a little bit small from the outside, but as soon as you enter you'll see it's one of the biggest structures in the Incendium mod, and it is the Forbidden Castle. The Forbidden Castle is a giant structure with tons and tons of different rooms in it, like archery towers, the armory, brewing rooms, cryostasis chambers, dining rooms, kitchens, treasure rooms, trap rooms, strider pens, blacksmiths, crypts, the library, lumber rooms, portal rooms, void miniboss rooms, crimson greenhouses, and even a sentry lab. And this entire area is ran by different types of piglins, like the Piglin Scout, Piglin Alchemists, Piglin Paratroopers, Piglin Pyromancers, Piglin Knights, Piglin Archers, and also Piglin Blacksmiths. With tons and tons of different rooms, and lots of difficult bosses and other mobs, there's lots of cool treasures and weapons that you can find here, so we'll take a look at some of them right now. One of the cool weapons that you can find in the Forbidden Castle is the Blazing Hatchet. Now this is an amazing axe not just because it looks super cool, but because when you hit things with it, it catches them on fire and they go flying. Oh wow, <laughs> look how cool that is. Next up is the Chilling Blade. This is a sword that you can find here in some of the colder rooms, and it's a cool sword that'll give slowness to your enemies when you use it on them, and it also shows little snow patterns around them too. Next up is another awesome sword that you can find in the Forbidden Castle called the Great Sword of Sacrifice. The Great Sword of Sacrifice is a super powerful weapon, but it has a slow charge, and whenever you use it, it deals a lot of damage, but it also does a lot of damage to you. Oh god, that's a lot of enemies coming after me. Hi there! After that is the first crossbow weapon that you can find here, called the Multiplex Crossbow. This is a super cool crossbow, and when you use it, it will fire a blast of a bunch of arrows in a short distance. Oh, 
Or maybe not. Here, let's see. Let's do that again. Oh, there we go. Next up is a smaller weapon, but it still packs quite the punch. It is the Scarlet Dagger. The Scarlet Dagger is a pretty cool weapon because once you kill a mob, or even if you hit them sometimes, let's see if I can kill this guy. It'll give you regeneration too for three seconds, so it's super helpful if you're low on health and need to kill something. Next up is another unique crossbow that you can find here called the Sentry's Wrath. This is an amazing crossbow, but you can only use spectral arrows with it, and once you load it up with a spectral arrow, it launches a slow lightning effect towards enemies, but deals a lot of damage and shoots lightning bolts out afterwards. Another weapon similar to the Sentry's Wrath is the Voltaic Trident. This looks like a normal trident, but it's so much more powerful, because when you use it, like the Sentry's Wrath, it sends out a lot of lightning effects. Oh god, look at that. That was so cool. And the last weapon that you can find in the Forbidden Castle is a sword called the Wither's Bane. The Wither's Bane is an awesome looking sword, look at that. And it's pretty helpful too, because if you're dealing hordes of undead, like Wither Skeletons, Regular Skeletons, or Zombie Piglins, when you hit one of them, it'll do damage to a lot of them if they're in a group. Let's see if we can- okay, those two are close together. Oh god, it killed that one. Are there any more? Hey guys. I don't know if that's just the area of effect doing it or not. Okay, we got a group of skeletons here. Let's try a round two. Oh god, that did so much damage to all of them. Okay, well, that is a really cool weapon. I like that. Next up is a structure that doesn't look like much from the outside, but as soon as you get a look at the inside, you'll be quite amazed. It is the Nether Reactor. The Nether Reactor is a super cool structure with lots of different loot in it, but there's a super dangerous enemy at the bottom of it called the Ghast Sentry. Up at the top of the nether reactor, there's a barrel right in the middle of it with an awesome piece of loot called the Radiation Shield. The Radiation Shield is an awesome item that you can equip and has a cool design on it. Look at that. And when it's hit with a projectile, it will send out a thing of poison and poison any enemy around you, including yourself though. To keep yourself from getting poisoned while using the Radiation Shield, you can look through the other barrels in the nether reactor and they'll sometimes have a piece of loot called the hazmat suit. The hazmat suit is super useful, it's an iron suit, there's one of the pieces, and you can wear it any one piece, and once you put it on, it will keep you from being poisoned in the toxic heat biome and by the radiation shield. Okay, so now that we have the shield equipped, you can see when a projectile hits it, it will send out a little wave of poison, but it's not poisoning the skeleton of course because he's undead. Let's see if we can do it again. There we go, look at the poison that comes out of it, that's pretty cool. Our next structure, or should I say structures, are a nice peaceful vacation compared to the dangerous structures that you have been visiting. This is the Piglin Village. The Piglin Village is a nice quaint little village that of course houses the Piglins. This village is unique in that the Piglins that spawn here are passive to the player so you can come here without worrying about being attacked. It's a nice little break from all the dangers that the nether hosts, which there are a lot of. There's a few different types of structures and houses that spawn in the Piglin Village, and some of them have their own unique loot, so it's a nice little stop on your journey to find some good treasures. structure in this mod is the pipelines. The pipelines are randomly generated tunnels which spawn in a few different biomes in the nether and are filled with very scary sentry blazes which will make sure to guard this place. Inside the pipelines you'll find tons of different rooms filled with traps, dangerous mobs, and of course lots of lava. But if you adventure far enough you may find little barrels filled with lots of good loot and sometimes you may even come across a treasure room, which is filled with lots of good loot that is yours for the taking if you can kill all of the sentry blazes. 
You may also find a pretty useful item in this dungeon called the Torch of Lunacy. This has an 8% chance to be dropped by the sentries in here, and when in your inventory will make them ignore you, which makes it super helpful for gathering all the loot that's in here. If you've been feeling a little bit hungry watching this mod showcase, then this next structure is for you. This structure is the Quartz Kitchen. The Quartz Kitchen is a unique little restaurant structure in the Nether, but be careful because the hosts aren't too keen of guests. Inside of the Quartz Kitchen you will find lots of different treasures locked in barrels and chests, but you also better be careful because you may run into a bunch of skeletons called the Skeleton Brothers and the head chef, Tort, who wields his weapon, a cake! After fighting off the Skeleton Bros and Tort, you can explore the rest of the Quartz Kitchen to find some amazing treasures in here. Our next structure is another unique one, and it's the Ruined Lab. The Ruined Lab can be found in the Withered Forest and is filled with a whole bunch of Wither Skeleton scientists. There's not too much purpose to this building other than looking super amazing and hosting some good treasures, but it does hold some lore to the mod, like the piglins that are held in cages here, that the Wither Skeleton scientists are doing experiments on, and all the piglin heads that are kept in the corners. Next up is another one of the biggest structures in the Incendium mod, and it is the Sanctum. The Sanctum is a huge quartz church that you can find in the quartz flats biome, and it's been infiltrated by all different kinds of illagers, like Sanctum cultists, ritualists, inquisitors, illusionists, apostles, ravagers, and even guardians. Of course, on the main floor, you'll find the entrance guarded by tons and tons of different illagers, but that's not all that you can find on the main floor. If you make your way over to any of the corners, you'll find spires that go all the way up and have enemies guarding each floor. Those aren't the only rooms in this structure though, there's a lot of hidden ones, like if you go through this little garden corridor, you'll find a staircase down to the deep, scary basement. Inside the basement, you'll find tons and tons of different rooms, of course filled with lots of illager enemies, different kinds of traps, but also amazing kinds of loot that you can find. There's nine different rooms that you can find in the basement of the Sanctum, and each of them are designed in a different way to hold different items, and have their own secret treasures in them. Some of them are even maze-like corridors where you can find super secret weapons and treasures. Once you make your way through the enemies and the traps of the basement, you'll be greeted with a third and final floor of the Sanctum, and this is the Mausoleum. There's a little puzzle that you have to do first that involves lava to get here, but once you do, it's definitely worth it as there's lots of different treasures, but also some bosses that you have to fight. The mausoleum is a maze-like floor and you never know what's going to be around the next corner. There may be tons and tons of cool treasure that you can claim for yourself, or there may be lots of difficult enemies waiting to kill you and take your stuff for their own. But, if you are diligent enough, you can find all the different rooms in here, and also make your way to the final room of the mausoleum, which is the vault. The vault has its own secret code that you need to use to unlock it, but once you enter it correctly, the door will open and you'll have access to it. When you're in the sanctum, you'll be given a mining fatigue effect. You'll find three vault guardians, and once you kill them, the mining fatigue will be lifted and you can break any block, also, when you kill them, they have a chance to drop their awesome crossbow weapon. Now that we've gone over the sanctum itself and some of the different puzzles and enemies that you can find inside, we can go over the loot that you can find here. The first weapon up is the Holy Wrath. 
The Holy Wrath is an amazing crossbow, and when you fire it, it has a chance to spiral into different fireballs. So let's go ahead and load this crossbow up, and which one of you? We'll shoot at you. Oh god, look at that. And we'll try at this guy too. Boop. Woo, look at that. That's pretty cool. After that, we have a sword called the Daybreaker. The Daybreaker is an awesome sword that you can find in the basement level of the Sanctum, and it will spawn on a wall after you make your way through an amazing maze. Be careful though, because once you take the Daybreaker off the wall, the sand will fall from beneath you, triggering a trap, and you'll have to make your way all the way back through by carefully walking on the edges. When you kill any mob with the Daybreaker, it has a chance to drop some gold, so let's go ahead. Sorry, guy. Oop. Oh, I got another right helmet from that. Oh yeah, and look at that. There's a little bit of gold. Just one gold nugget, but I guess still better than nothing. We'll spare you for today. After the Daybreaker, we have an awesome bow called the Ragnarok. This can be found in random tunnels in the mausoleum, and it's an amazing bow because as you hold it back, it creates a lightning strike. So let's go ahead... Let's aim it at this guy and see what happens. Oh, okay, well. Oh, god. <laughs> I guess it's a powerful lightning strike, too. Huh, that's pretty cool that it does a little particle effect behind it as well. And the last cool treasure that you can find in here isn't a weapon, but it's something called the Scroll of Returning. The Scroll of Returning is actually pretty nice because it allows you to right-click it and teleport back to the overworld without the use of dying, or another portal. I'm not going to use it now though because I don't want to go back to the overworld, but it's still a pretty handy item, especially if you have mobs chasing after you. And our last but certainly not least structure is the Infernal Altar, which spawns in the Infernal Dunes biome. The Infernal Altar is an amazing structure which hosts little mini biomes in each of the corners, and in the middle is another star, and for good reason, the Infernal Altar holds the final boss of the Incendia mod. At the center of the Infernal Altar, you'll find a lectern with a book on it, and if you open the book, there's a whole bunch of garbled text, but basically what it tells you is that you need another star to summon the final boss, the Hovering Inferno, and all you gotta do is take that nether star you have, and throw it right on top of the book, and it summons him. The Hovering Inferno is a super cool boss and has a few different phases of attacks. It also has more health than the Ender Dragon or the Wither, making it the hardest boss in Minecraft with this mod installed. During his first phase, the Hovering Inferno can shoot shulker bullets, fireballs, and fireworks near him, which make it very close to deal some damage, and he can also summon some other mobs like Infernal Minions, which are just Vexes, Evoker Fangs, and also Desert Blazes, which make it a little bit more challenging. Once you've beaten the first phase, the Hovering Inferno will be revived, and this is when Phase 2 starts. The Hovering Inferno will start to launch different lasers, and you have to avoid all of them. Don't worry about attacking the boss though, as its health slowly goes down, and you just have to survive long enough. Once the Hovering Inferno's boss bar goes down for the second time, Phase 2 will end, and the boss will officially be dead. Then you can claim all of the prizes that it drops as your own. Once you kill the Hovering Inferno, each of these weapons has a 20% chance to drop from it. First up is a cool shield called the Necrotic Shield. This shield is super useful, as when you get hit by any type of enemy, it will give that enemy the wither effect. So let's go in here, let's see if there's any enemies around. I know, oh yeah, there's a zombie out there. Let's see if we can get that guy to hit me. Hey buddy, you wanna hit me? Oh yeah, look at that! Oh god! <laughs> he got withered before he died. Next up is probably my favorite item in the entire mod, and that is the Prismatic Shield. This shield isn't just for looks, even though it looks amazing. You can use it to block mobs, and whenever you counter something, it has the ability to smite them. So let's go in here, and maybe I can get hit by this guy who's closer. What happens when they hit- Oh yeah, look at that! Oh my gosh, that's so pretty! Any other? Go ahead, hit me again. Oh! And there he goes. Wow, that's a strong shield. 
Next up after the prismatic shield is an amazing weapon called the trailblazer. The trailblazer is a bow that can pierce through enemies and will leave a trail of fire and once it hits a block it'll explode. So let's go ahead and just launch at the wall so we can see the fire that it leads. Oh yeah there's one of them. There's so many endermen in here now. Yeah it leaves little fire blocks around and it also explodes. Now let's try and hit this guy here and see what happens. Oh. So it just went through him. Okay, there we go. Huh. So it's a pretty powerful bow, and it has some cool firework effects and fire effects when you use it. After that, we have another far-ranged weapon called the Firestorm. Look at it in my hand, it looks so cool. The Firestorm is a crossbow, and once you load it up with a spectral arrow, it has the ability to launch a fire projectile. So let's see if- oh, I guess I hit that guy there. Let's see if we can use it on a mob. Hi, guy. Bonk. Whoa, that looked so cool. Okay, one more time. Huh, that's an awesome fire projectile. I love that. Oh my gosh. And the last drop that you can get from our friend the Hovering Inferno is the Infernal Feather. Now on its own, the Infernal Feather doesn't really do anything but look pretty. But if you know a smithing table nearby, then you can take that and an elytra and put it in there to get the infernal wings and once you equip these they look super cool oh my gosh they're like rainbow elytras the infernal wings give you full armor protection for the chest plate while also allowing you to have an elytra the only thing it does is minus five percent speed but i think that's pretty worth it to have a lot more protection <laughs> look how cool that is oh my gosh that is all for this video though, I hope you all enjoyed the amazing Incendium mod, if you did, be sure to hit that like and subscribe button, and comment what your favorite structure or biome in the Incendium mod was. I'll see you in the next one, Bye bye